Okay, I will tell you something about the current stages of uh, the LibreOffice extension and template side, the new side that I want to create to make it uh, much easier for users uh, to uh, su submit uh, templates and extensions. So, a, a bit about me, I'm a member of the board, uh, I work uh, for LibreOffice and as uh, a former or uh, from 2010 to uh, on and uh, currently I'm working on the step for uh, templates and extension side. I started that for LibreOffice uh, in 2010 uh, on 2011 and uh, I'm a developer in this uh, collective uh, part of the uh, plan that are uh, the community-driven uh, projects. So, goals from this uh, from my work is first uh, make it uh, much easier. Uh, first, it should this new repository should have a, a search function like the current one. It uh, should have uh, content tags t uh, categories. So that you can search for categories. Um, then we need to know which version of uh, LibreOffice you want to search uh, a template or um, a extension for. And we want to have lists with logo screenshots so that people can see a bit about it. Description of the things. Virus spending should be there because uh, we want not to uh, su uh, submit uh, extensions templates that uh, have maybe some problems inside. <coughs> oh. Yeah, okay. Uh, then uh, we have this uh, configuration uh, files for um, products, then uh, the legal disclaimer, licenses, etc. Many things uh, to configure, configure and uh, to submit to the uh, user. Some sometimes the provider, the, the contributor, has to uh, submit uh, and agree to, to some uh, licenses and some uh, some conditions. And we will also <coughs> put in front of users that download some some information that we are not responsible for everything. Disclaimers. Yeah, disclaimers. So, um, then it should have uh, some L10N features so that we can uh, um, yeah, translate it to different languages and have different language uh, sections. And uh, the, the Content that is uh, in the both sides. We have currently we have both two sides, one for extensions and one for templates. That is not seen in in the web, but it, that are currently two sides. Will be in the future one side with two applications running um, the different stuff for extension and for. Uh, I know. Um, for extensions and for uh, for the um, for the ex extensions, templates, extensions, and we have to sub to to transport the the content from the old side or current side to the new side. That will be uh, a special process because the structure will be a bit different. I'll show later. So. That's the current status. We have this CMS, Content Management System, system <coughs> Plone. Uh, we have a bit customized uh, Plone Software Center. That's something that uh, Plone itself uses to uh, submit uh, add-ons for Plone. Uh, then I had some uh, block storage because in that uh, version of Plone, uh, software center, it will be put into the database the, the, and uh, 
blobs or binaries should not be in a database because it blows that uh, database up. So I had a special product, but it's uh, it's a bit um, not uh, super maintained. Um, that's also a problem. Then have, we have this uh, virus scanning uh, with Clamahor and two products for the templating of the different sites. So, um, inside this software, uh, this clone software center, we have uh, a software center project releases section that that makes uh, my head always uh, I get always problems because people uh, um, delete this releases section and I have the problem that they get errors and I had to fix that for them because then I had to add a new releases section <sighs> that's a problem with, the, with this product um, then inside this releases section you can put releases and the releases um, for every version you have a new release and add to this uh, release you have the, to add a downloadable file that's uh, this extension or template or you link to another direction when you have uh, always uh, a server or uh, a service where the files are always uh, delivered and you can link to that. That's, uh, you see, it's a bit complicated. I have always to help uh, users and so that was uh, my, my start, start point when I want to make it more easy and comfortable for users to submit their templates and extensions. So, what will we do? Uh, if, you, when, if you see, we have this clone, we have two different uh, centers in, in the future, um, and we are virus scanning and one layout product. That's also a new um, um, method to, to template a site because you have a rules file and then you have um, HTML and CSS and images and a connection between both so that the dynamic of this uh, content management system is connected to this uh, static files. You need only for templating one who is uh, doing this, uh, um, this stuff for um, um, who, who do the, the, the rules file and later on one web developer who is able to do HTML and <coughs> CSS. So uh, what we have not have anymore is an, an extra blob storage because the new one is inside the product is putting every binary into a blob storage that's standard. So, if you see the current status on the left side and the future status on the right side, you see I have killed this releases section and um, I have made also smaller uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the two others. I made, first I made only a, a release but uh, with files that you could put inside in uh, the, the system, but I, in the last weeks I, I made also this linked file because I know that people have always uh, sometimes their files on different uh, web services and want to link to that and so I provide also another object that has the possibility to link to objects that are um, yeah, um, outside of this repository. But then we have not uh, any virus scanning for, for these people. That's maybe a problem, but they have to live with that. With that. So, if you see, this, this uh, green one is only for the site manager, the uh, admin of the site, but the contributor has only uh, two objects to, to work on. 
a project that has to be submitted and then published by reviewer. And then they could uh, put releases with files or with uh, linked files to this project as many as they, as they want. So, should make it a bit easier. Hmm. Would be great when it's a connection. The connection is a bit broken here. So, then we have this, uh, this messaging feature that we have not in the, in the past. When a new project is created, the manager of the site or the management of the site uh, will not see that. Although he is looking in the dashboard, but uh, that is not on your regular basis. basis. So we, I thought that it would be good if uh, the manager would be uh, informed when uh, a new project will be created, so that he can, uh, uh, he or you can go to the project and review it and publish it. Then also for when the project owner doesn't know uh, uh, if the workflow status changes when he uh, submitted for publication um, and the, the reviewer is uh, doing the publication, make it public, then he don't know currently that it's public. So in the future he will be get an, an email and uh, will be informed that his project has has a workflow uh, status uh, change, and he can look what the workflow stage uh, is currently for his project. Maybe um, there's also some information. Ah, I should do that manually. So. Also, when, when a new release is would be great. <laughs> uh, when a new release is, uh, is put to this uh, to this project, because the owner knows that someone, maybe him, he himself, has put a new release to that uh, project and um, has not uh, to look every day if there is something happening. If someone is maybe um, contributing to his project. So, me. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you see, that's. Uh, I, I want to to show you that uh, in, in the code, uh, the plot system brings brings this messaging uh, on some events with it. Uh, that's inside the features of the project, uh, the uh, product, and you have to. Uh, have some uh, some coding uh, to to use this messaging feature in this one uh, on a one event event uh, the change of the status a mail will be sent uh, to the owner of the project that the status has been changed the message is uh, here the status of your project. The this extension project changed, and uh, your job subject, that's the project name. Okay. You see, that's uh, the message uh, in hard coded form uh, that will be will go go out to the user, and uh, so he get a message and can show uh, look on his project. Okay. So. <coughs> You see that's not uh, not seen at the moment, really seen. Um, but that's uh, that's from the structure of the uh, of the new center. We have on this left side the most uh, popular extensions, and on the right side most recent extensions, and and a list to search for for. Uh, um, new extensions and templates. It's it's the same in those parts. One for extensions and one for templates. Um, 
that's the new project view. You have here this uh, description um, on the right side of the project resources. For example, if someone uh, provides an external uh, documentation and it is listed, the link there, uh, and so um, install instructions. Um, yeah. I, I made it not good because I pasted a, a text real C. Um, it could be also uh, linking. Okay, uh, that's a new um, uh, resource for for a, uh, for a uh, release. Um, yeah, I um, here you see only was submitted. When we have more, then the list is uh, stronger, and the compatibility and so and so on. Lazen's uh, development status. Yeah. Oh, no. Can you go back? Okay. You see, when when the when someone has uh, logged in and is able to to write on this project, he gets some more information. Uh, one would be when he has not submitted uh, a release, then will be an information on top that he should go. The next step would be to submit a release. If he has already one uh, submitted, then there, there are some links to uh, go uh, to click on it and go in the process to submit a new release. They have different versions. One was the first is uh, for uh, files that are hosted on the on the system, and the second for linked files, or linked release. Yes. Okay. You see, when someone is editing it, it's very easy. There are fields with uh, some uh, descriptions that you can do. Uh, yeah. This is uh, a field where you can also uh, um, put in some links. It's very it, uh, common uh, this field with uh, some editing features. Okay, and as you see, there can, there's also a place for submitting a logo, uh, a screenshot, uh, and, and so on, and some information. I I want to not show the the mail address of the owner. Okay, what will you do next? Okay, yeah, the content of the current site has to be transmitted to the new one. There are different methods. We are thinking of uh, making it uh, um, a project for the next kernel. Because we have uh, new content types that are not, uh, that are modern uh, content types from Plum. We have Formal, uh, the, the current status is with old uh, content uh, types. They will be gone latest with, with uh, version 5. That's on the, on the stage. We have fewer can, uh, content style, uh, types, so we had to shrink and to get the, the information in the right direction. Uh, there are different uh, ways to, to reach that, maybe with a Python script, because everything is running Python, uh, transmogrifier or manual. It depends on the, on the, the stuff, uh, the, the, the numbers, how much, uh, um, how much content we have to drive from one instance to the next. Um, what we want to have is also the historic of this current uh, system and the portal, uh, the, the things that are in the portal catalog listed, indexes at etc. Then the members, users of the current uh, site has to be migrated to the new one. I have uh, already a way to, to do that, it's very easy, but um, then all users have to get uh, a new pass password. What they can, uh, um, Make that on their own. They have to click and get a mail with the with the link. Um, yeah, then um, maybe I want to do 
we some, uh, some more uh, export import of this, uh, the members. I, I know that is possible with, uh, with Python script to do that. I have already created that and pushed it uh, to GitHub and yeah, I, I use it for that. So then, uh, add some more languages. The content uh, is already enabled for multilingual uh, support, but um, I want first to start with with an English version and then later on add some some more uh, languages because everything has to, trans to be translated to the new version, <coughs> to new languages that I add. Um, otherwise, no one will see any content on it, and that's not fine. Yeah. Then, when you get some more languages, you has to um, move the content to language folders, and that makes it um, that so nobody will see with a different language the content. When you have a German uh, language setting in your browser then you will not see this English content. So the content has to be translated. Um, many things we can do with, uh, with Spoodle, because it's, uh, the, the site itself could be, and the, the add-ons can be translated to um, with proof files. So it's not that difficult, it's the normal process. And the next step will be to have a new design. We had to find someone who wants to make uh, HTML and CSS uh, files and make a new shiny design for the site. Because it's uh, static HTML and CSS, so a uh, skilled web designer should be able to, to make a, a design. It's, I think it's not uh, that difficult to find one. The rules file is that uh, thing that uh, makes it dynamic, create, <coughs> connect the, the dynamic CSS, uh, CMS with this HTML CSS. So the, the, the nice thing in, inside mode is you can uh, test it. Uh, you can write this this root file, and there are also this uh, h this index file. That's normal uh, HTML file, and the CSS and images. And so you can uh, use uh, you can use it um, make it on uh, a test site. Uh, create uh, work on, on CSS and HTML. Um, and see uh, already the res result, what's working, what's not working. So it's re really easy uh, to, to uh, apply a new uh, theme. So, questions? Yeah. Um. The business number of uh, LibreOffice and the uh, support uh, was it really impossible to say that it uh, supports uh, from this version and so on uh, uh, future versions? Uh, no, but uh, I have also made. Um, you have you have some fields to, to click on uh, which version it's uh, it's compatible with. Yes. And when I uh, well, when the manager puts a new version uh, to, to the availables, uh, to the list, yeah? then every member, every project owner will get a message that there is a new version of LibreOffice added to the, to the list and that he should look at his project if the releases are compatible with it. That's a problem with, that we already have uh, at the moment because uh, someone puts a release outside and when there are uh, five, uh, another version of LibreOffice is out, then nothing happens because nobody takes care of it. So we had 
we have to, to when, we, when we change over to the new side, we have to look at every uh, project, every release from the current side, if it's compatible with the with new, and when it is there, when it is, then we have to check that it's uh, compatible. We need some, some people, QA people, who um, look out at the uh, projects and releases and make, this, uh, make a list what's compatible, what's not compatible. And um, I'm not so happy to, uh, to, pro to transport uh, versions, releases that are only uh, compatible with uh, LibreOffice 3.3, for example, uh, to the new site when they are not compatible with, with the current versions, because we deliver 4.4 and 5.0 at the moment, and 4.4 will not be delivered uh, maybe uh, in, uh, in a year or in a half of a year. And um, so it would be great to, um, to have only current versions uh, yeah, transmitted from one to the other. 